today I'm going to show you how to draft and sew this Barbie inspired scallop tent top. In the new movie, Barbie wears a similar design as a beach dress, so this is a more casual version. The scallop process is a great technique to learn that you can use on any location, including collars and cuffs. You can also make this a dress by extending the length. Beginning with the pattern draft, you will need to trace your bodice block from the waist up. If you don't have one, I have a video linked below talking you through each step. To start, we will be moving the front dart location from the shoulder to under the arm on the side seam. This is simple to do. Just draw a line to the bust apex where the darts currently meet, then cut along this line and also cut out the neck dart. Pivot to close the neck dart legs together and this will open the dart under the arm. Tape the neck dart together and place paper in the gap behind the new side dart. To shape the neckline, measure on your body from your neck to the point you want the top of your blouse to start. Make it as high or low as you desire. Mark out a horizontal line on your front pattern at this distance. Measure in from the side slightly. I use my bra strap as a guide as then I know it will be covered. Under the arm, I lowered it by 1.5 cm. I find this gives a nice shape. Draw in the curve of the arm between these two points. Repeat the process for the back, ensuring you use the same 1.5 cm distance at the underarm seam that you did on the front bodice. Cut away the top sections we don't need. To complete, add seam allowances. I will work with 1.5 cm and mark all labels, notches and patent references you will need. To begin the skirt, we can measure from the bodice patterns along the waistline seam. I like to measure including the seam allowances and draft my skirt with the seam allowance included. You don't have to do that, you can add them on at the end, but whichever way you choose to do it, make sure you remember as you will need to add at the end if you select the without method. On your body, measure how long you want your skirt section. Draw this vertical line on fresh paper with a 5cm hem and a 1.5cm seam allowance at the top. On the top, draw a curve the measurement of your front waistband. Start the line fairly flat and curve upwards towards the end. It doesn't have to be too precise, just a slight bend of a few centimetres. Square off, ensuring you maintain an even length throughout. Repeat the process for the back skirt and label up your pattern as required. Next we will add the scalloped detail. I'll show you on the front, but the process is the same on the back. Mark out a 5cm hem all the way along the base which we added earlier. Mark any seam allowances you have already included. So for the front, it's just the side seam. Measure the distance with your measuring tape. To calculate how wide we want each scallop to be, multiply this measurement by two as this piece is on the fold and divide by how many scallops you want. Make sure it is an odd number. The reason why is that it looks prettier with a full scallop at the centre line of the front skirt. Split the line up by our width and then half the width at the fold line. Now draw the scallop shape between. You can draw around something circular like a mug or use a protractor. If you're able, you may even just be able to eyeball it, but you want them to look as symmetrical and even sized as you can. Leave a slight gap at the bottom around one centimeter. It helps during construction. Do the same for the back and ideally your scallop width will be very close to your front width. Select your number of scallops to whatever you get sit closest. For the fabric I used a simple cotton lawn in pink gingham. When you cut fabric with a clear pattern like this it is best to cut it flat rather than on the fold and use the lines of the pattern to guide you. So I cut one half of my front bodice here 
and then I'm using that to align it to my print and cut the second half. This will guarantee a symmetrical finish, although it does take a lot longer. For the back, which is not cut on the fold, I also took into account the seam allowance to pattern match from the seam line and not the cut line. Luckily for me, the squares matched my seam allowance so I could just cut matching the print again. For the lining, I used a simple white cotton and cut the exact same pattern pieces as the main fabric. Starting construction, I began by forming the darts on the front bodice. I have a tutorial on how to achieve pristine darts, including ways to mark out your pattern reliably on your fabric. Hit the link below to learn that for yourself. Once the waist darts were in place, I repeated the process on the side darts. I pressed the darts towards the side seams and towards the waistline. For the back darts, I laid out both left and right side by side and pinned them. I like to do this to ensure I don't accidentally form the darts inside out when you have fabric like this with no clear front or back side. I pressed these to the centre back. When you form the lining using the same method, you may wish to press your darts in the opposite direction to reduce bulk in the seam lines later. The front and back bodice are joined at the side seams with a 1.5cm seam allowance. This is then pressed open. I don't use any seam finishing techniques on this project as it is fully lined. The straps were made from a rectangle of fabric that is four centimeters wide. I folded them in half lengthways, right sides together and sewed them up using a one centimeter seam allowance. excess seam allowance was trimmed away and I turned them through so they were the correct way round. I used a loop turner but you can use a safety pin to turn. These were pressed flat ensuring the seam ran straight on one side. To attach the strap to the bodice, measure 1.5cm from the side edge at the front centre. 
pin in place. You may want to baste these now if you wish. Construct your lining as you did your main fabric, then align together, right sides facing. Pin and match along the entire top edge, aligning all corners and seams. The reason my lining is two different colours is that this was originally my toile made from old pillowcases. Once I made it though, only very minor fit adjustments were needed, so I decided to save fabric by reusing it as the lining. Sew along the top edge at 1.5cm and leave a gap at the back corners to attach the straps into later. Cut the corners and then snip the curves. Turn the correct way round and we're going to try it on now to check the fit and also set the strap length you need. Once happy you know your length, feed the straps into the gap we left ensuring it's not twisted and pin. Sew in place by connecting the gap. If you're confident with your strap length, you can do this all in one when you attach the lining. Now understitch from centre back to centre back along the top edge. There is a lot of fabric and curves and corners, so work slow, stopping frequently to feel and adjust your fabric so you don't catch anything you're not supposed to. Turn out for good this time and press the whole thing nice and sharp. Now we will form the skirt. Begin attaching the skirt front and back together at the side seams, right sides together. Always sew in the same direction and press the seam open once done. Repeat for the lining fabric and then align them right sides together. Time to form the scallops. Trace off the scallops from your pattern we calculated earlier. Use a fabric marker to draw onto your fabric. 
do this for the entire hem. I like to hand base my fabric together now around the area I've just drawn. You can skip this step if you wish but I find it helps prevent the fabric from shifting around as I sew. Especially since I don't have a machine that allows me to keep my fabric fully flat on the tabletop. The fabric hangs and will move slightly so this stops that. At your machine you want a regular straight stitch and you want to reduce the stitch length. Before you begin, I suggest making sure you have a good amount of thread on your bobbin as you don't want to run out midway through. We're going to slow along our pencil line, guiding the fabric slowly round the curve. This can take some practice. At the points, leave your needle down and lift your presser foot. Rotate your fabric and then lower your presser foot again. Try not to make your points too high as you will get creases. This is slow going, but it's worth the time. Now trim the excess seam allowance. Cut into each point as close as you dare. You want to be as close as possible but without snipping the thread. Really take your time over this, it's quite tedious this process but it gives a big statement in the end to simple shapes. The next tips are things I found help get a really good smooth edge especially if you do this on fabrics like satin or silk dupions. They add time but make a big difference to the quality. Begin by snipping one layer at a time, staggered apart. Press this layer open. Alternatively, you can snip the bottom layer once the top is pressed back if it is easier. Do every single scallop all the way along in this manner. Turn the correct way around, pressing out each curve with your fingers. Press and work your way along. You may have to turn the odd one back round and snip a little closer to the stitch line if you've not gone far enough. Just be careful not to go over. Doing this isn't quick and it's a lot of back and forth. Put on a podcast or an audio book and just enjoy zoning out as you work through it. I don't recommend approaching this project in a rush. With all that pressing, the chances are you have a slight distortion with your two layers of your skirt. So smooth it out on a table 
and pin the top curve. They lightly will not match. Baste them together along the top line in your seam allowance. Attach the skirt section to the bodice main fabric only along the waistline right sides together. Match the seams, centre points and back edges. You can see here how much shorter my lining is compared to my main fabric due to the scalloping process. I use my main fabric as a guide for my seam allowance. Press the seam allowance up towards the bodice. The blouse can be finished now by joining the back seam, making sure you match the waist seam and the top and bottom edge. I inserted an invisible zipper too to get an in and out. I won't show you that here but I have a tutorial showing the process in depth for you to follow if you need it. Once that is in I will then hand stitch the lining to complete turning the seam allowance under inside like so. Start at the side of the zipper and work your way all the way around to the other zipper edge. This is a really neat way of enclosing all them raw edges for a pristine top inside and out. So here is our Barbie beach dress inspired blouse. This cheeky scalloped hem edge can be used on any edge straight or curved. It looks great on hems and on collars. Fully lined, this is a really pretty finish too. It's not a quick thing to do, but it doesn't require any specialist tools, just a regular straight stitch and plenty of patience. I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you have, please hit like. Consider subscribing if you want to learn more sewing skills. Your support and comments help grow my channel so I can provide you with more free content. Happy sewing!